So, video game critics are a thing. Used to be they were the go-to for finding out whether a game was, you know, good or not. But nowadays something has happened. Video game companies, instead of... Or video game critics, instead of being beholden to their full-on opinions, especially, like, the big publications, they often, instead of uh, finding themselves talking about, you know, you know, talking about the flaws of a game or something like this and that, instead they don't... Instead, in, instead of seeking to actually give a good critical analysis of something, instead they just blindly throw praise at something that has that has a lot of financial backing like triple a games and all this and all that i find that i find that uh when video game uh, companies or video game critics do that they sort of lose part of their identity and they lose a bit of their uh, of their legitimacy i was just like i used to be a huge fan of gamespot and have you heard about the whole game uh, GameSpot Kane and Lynch controversy? Yeah, yeah, where they fired that one critic who wrote a mediocre, uh, like a review saying that Kane and Lynch Deadman was mediocre, and the company, uh, I think it was uh, Idos Ga- uh, Games, wanted him fired, and they fired him. Mm. Yeah, that's some bullshit. Yeah, I, it, it's just like why can't we be honest? But instead of everything being, you know, legitimate and holding to that, now it just seems that's what everyone's doing nowadays. Everyone's just, right? Every, everyone's too afraid to give a real opinion because they're too scared of the backlash from certain fringe groups that they're going to get for giving a real opinion on something. Well, yeah, fringe and, groups and also, like, like video game companies because yeah, yeah you'll have the fringe um, groups of cod fans like but you see a video game company in my opinion that is going to be like you reviewed our game badly fire that guy is in my opinion also a fringe group and that's someone okay, that that's a enough. review company doesn't have to listen to you don't have to listen to that game company and fire the guy that gave a bad review about that game because that company's pissed off at you unless you're on that company's payroll in which case you're not a good game critic or a good game critic company. So there you go. Fair enough. Um, there you go. Ladies and that's why I turns to like people that I felt were less biased, like individual reviewers after a while. Well, yeah, like for Same a really lately. long time. And here lately, there, there's been some controversy in the past couple of days. So I'm still waiting to see what my final opinion is. But one person who's lined up more with what I agree with on like, whether or not I like something than anybody else for me has been angry Joe. Yeah, Joe's Joe's good. So Joe said some things the other day and he's pissed some people off and I'm still kind of looking at that, but no, not really the point right now. But like here lately though, I've been a really big fan of the fact that Steam has the balls to allow users to review things on their platform, which I think that Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo should take a look at that and consider as well allowing it. And I don't think they ever will because no. I think they'll think it'll lose some money, but it will. I love the fact that you can check user reviews on steam because now I can get the opinion of other people who are like me, who are gamers um, that aren't on a payroll that aren't biased. You know, I can go in and look as a whole, be like, Oh, like most everybody like this. Uh, most everybody had a problem with this. Let's see why. And you'll go in and you'll be like, you'll see 12 guys and they'll be like, man, it could have been a really cool game, but you know, it doesn't work well on, you know, this system. And you're like, okay, well my system it'll work well with, and then you'll go in and you'll, you'll find like 12 people in another thing. And they're like, man, could have been a really cool game, but they're charging all this money for unlocking weapons and stuff. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, yeah. So that's probably not worth it. No, it's I not. love that about steam. Like, I mean, you can talk shit about other things about steam for sure. Like it's not a perfect system by any means, but no. that review system for users has been like a godsend to me. And well, I'm really glad that they do that there. Uh, there's people like who I who I go to. You know, Angry Joe's one of them. Uh, Yahtzee from The Escapist is one See, of them. Yahtzee, I think, is hilarious and entertaining, but I don't agree with him a lot of the time. So well, that's why I cite Angry Joe over him because like well, Yahtzee hates a lot of things that I think are perfectly good games. 
<laughs> so for in, uh what's what's one that he didn't like that you really liked? um he's he's disliked a lot of my favorites i can't actually remember off the top well, of my head I remember, but i will find out for you i remember uh for doom uh doom 2016 he actually expected it to uh not do very good but he was genuinely surprised he actually named it like his game of the year that year and 2017 he well, named Resident Evil 7 his game I of the year. I noticed he's gotten a little better too like he seems to like more things than he used to as well. Um I, I, think I know he originally can... he originally took a dump all over Demon Souls just because he thought it was like unfair and stuff and well, then he went and back that... and he changed his opinion and he was like Dark Souls is a pretty good franchise, you know. Well, no, he actually he considers Dark Souls the standard of like difficult uh, world, like difficult third person, yeah, world faring action game. But his initial opinion when he played Demon Souls was pretty much like "fuck this game." <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> because he was frustrated. Yeah. I mean, most that's how most people's most people's opinions were. And then Dark Souls came out and perfected the formula, and he was just like, "It's actually really good. I like this." Sorry, but okay, Kyra, do you trust video game reviewers? I don't really ever look at game reviews a lot i just kind of like I'll buy this if i want to and if it's bad oh well i made a bad decision <laughs> no if you if it's bad then you take it back and you get your money back and you try again because which is what, which is what ben made me do with sonic forces which it was the smart move because <laughs> sonic forces while while decent in some things is an overall failure as a sonic game I showed up with it the day that I bought the Switch. I'm like, yeah, I think I got this instead of Sonic Mania by accident. And before I even got done saying it, he's like, oh, we're going to go return that right frickin' now. Yes. <laughs> and it, and have you played Sonic Mania? Not yet. Um... Okay. You need to play Sonic Mania and look and, and watch gameplay footage from Sonic Forces and just be thankful. It's like, wow, I'm glad he talked me out of that. Yeah. All right, so Dun Video Game Donkey has a few things to say about video game critics. Let's hear what uh, let's hear what the Dunkmeister General's got to say. I just realized I'm not going to be able to tell you for suck. sure. Right, guys? Yeah, 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 See, YouTube Comments agrees with me, and we already know that YouTube Comments is the premier location for intellectual gaming critiques harboring only the most cutting-edge scholars, such as middle schooler Khan. But what separates this guy from this guy? Well, this guy gets paid to say stupid shit. The first issue I have with gaming outlets is how their opinions are so decentralized. When you have multiple writers working on a website, you can lose track of who's actually talking. Breathe easy, Sonic fans. Sega got this one right. Sonic the Hedgehog 4, I think was pretty mediocre. Sonic is good again. Sonic was never good. Numerous fun titles. Sonic yes. was never good. The levels are great. There are no good Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. games. Super true. Super detailed backgrounds. Whoa. Excellent animation. There are no good Sonic the Hedgehog games. Fantastic level and design. Then, Sonic is awesome. I'll continue right? making yeah. this Just thing. this year alone, IGN has featured over Sonic was awesome, right? Different yeah. Reviewers. Like, when you see a guy who'd been saying Sonic sucked the entire time. Risky, <laughs> angry joke. You know exactly whose point of view it's coming from. Jim now, Sterling. Now, a review from IGN, you've just entered the fucking ladder. I've only seen like two of his videos, but he seems pretty cool. Between the critic um, and the guy with the podium. So, uh, Jim Sterling. Mm. Like mm. Yeah, Sterling's fun. Until your audience watch watch his whole... It's also important uh, yeah. to acknowledge your shortcomings as a reviewer. My wow, personally gosh. is that I have no fucking patience at all. Pretty much throw any RPG at me. I'm just going to say, nah, that's, that's boring. But you know what's dumber than RPGs? Anime. Unless we're talking this guy, you need to get this bullshit out of my face. But you know what I hate much, much more than anime? Turn-based Turn -based combat. Real, yeah. I despise this shit. I'm not a big like fan of it either. That figured out how to make it fun, but those don't count. Turn-based combat is fucking boring tedious and draining it is the opposite of fun so when i say persona 5 a turn-based anime rpg is actually pretty fun you should go damn okay Agreed. maybe that game is all right probably one that's exactly what i said about it frequent it's like, i don't i can't explain to you yeah, why it's good but their turn-based combat is good Bubsy 3d sucked listen fucko you don't have to see eye to eye on every single game to put your trust in someone obviously a critic's power lies in the consistency of their voice. But when you're consistently wrong... This is one of the least exciting platformers I've played in some time. This is a Call of Duty game refreshingly original. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. That is when you become Armand White. Fucking Armand, right, Armand White. This dude is the ultimate contrarian. Both of his parents were white. His name is Armand White. 
So he said, nah, fuck you, I'm black. According to Armand White, everything that is good is bad, and everything that is bad is good. Does Sorry, this make what? him useless as a critic? Not at all. When Armand White tells you that Man of Steel is the godfather of superhero films and calls it his movie of the year, then oh, you know I ain't seeing that. <laughs> so this is the worst movie yet created. Some films transcend even Armand White, though. And then you have a movie like Suicide Squad that's just such a piece of fucking shit. Even this guy who likes fucking video game movies. When even he doesn't like it, that's when you have fucked up. At least he stands out. So many of these reviews read exactly the same. Makes you feel eerily like Batman. The player really feel like Batman. Could not look or feel more Batman. He does feel like we would feel like Batman. IGN, what did you think? Arkham Asylum makes you feel like you're Batman. My reviews certainly are <laughs> but at least I'm trying out here. Even after I put my I mean, stuff to be up, fair, I'm still though. in the comments taking the discussion even further. Kind, kind now, of what we're looking for in a Batman game. We Metroid all want to be Batman. Metroid plays Metroid as a bounty hunter that shoots a dinosaur in outer space with his missile 9.5. What the fuck was the point of this? I can find all this shit on the back of the box, except there, it would probably sound exciting. The only real content in this review was the number at the end of it, which is usually restricted to a 7, 8, or a 9, all of which implied the game is good. Even something as disastrous as Mass Effect oh. will still get away with a 7 out of 10. I play a lot of games, and on my scale, most of this shit fucking sucks, man. Honestly. Even going back through the years, I find that only a few select games really hold up today. So when I do give a game a 3 out of 5, I'm saying, okay, this is a quality game. This is something worth your time that actually held my interest to the end credits. I feel like a lot of critics are too afraid to say something real, and I think there's a lot of factors that influence this. Gaming outlets and even YouTubers now have relationships and contacts with these companies so they can get interviews, early copies, early game footage. This doesn't mean they're paid off, but maybe they won't criticize Oh uh, yeah, it's a Gershman. As they shoot. They're part of a circle, and some of these websites are funded in large by advertising game developers, which fuels these really lame trends. Mainstream critics are pretty much restricted to only play the latest releases, so their standards are defined by what's been done recently. And then you have this fucking shitty rat race to be the first review on Metacritic so that your dumbass website can get more traffic, and the end result is a column of weak ass first impressions. Right now, the music comes out like this. Right. People are writing a review in a, in a day. First of all, you can't listen to a, an album and rate it in a day. It's just impossible. The best review. I agree with that. I've tried. Subjective. That was about but that doesn't mean you throw <laughs> objectivity out the window. You have to build your case with honest statements that even someone who disagrees with you could relate to. Recently, GameSpot gave the new Crash Remaster a 6 out of 10, citing some abrupt difficulty spikes. But if you know GameSpot, you know these guys aren't exactly capable when it comes to platformers. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is a tough game. Old school tough. This will test even the most seasoned platforming veterans. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is by far the most challenging game. The game's high difficulty may initially scare off new players. But why is my opinion more valid than this guy's? Well, first off, I actually completed the fucking game. This dude got halfway through the game and put his review up. What the fuck? It's funny because I think he's absolutely right. Crash Bandicoot is a little rough on the controls and the camera, but it's completely doable until this fucking piece of shit, dumb motherfucker turtle. Who is responsible for this fucking abomination? This has got to be one of the single worst levels I've ever seen in a video game. The game can feel really old. Depth perception is an issue. Stiff driving control. Physics just don't always work. Piece of shit turtle. Hit detection in general can be a little weird. It's not quite as precise as it should be. When Reggie was developing Mario 64, he discovered that jumps requiring pinpoint precision just did not fly in a 3D space. Naughty Dog, however, said, Fuck that shit. Jump on this shitty turtle, kid, except it won't even bounce you far enough to get over the fucking piece of shit bridge. <laughs> There's certainly a stupid. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And the series I had to cheat to, be, to beat that level. On the visual <laughs> By cheating, I mean, like, walk on the road. Water shimmering down a waterfall, an ancient temple illuminated by sunlight. When you lose, Crash doesn't just disappear. He fucking gets incinerated. Fucking gets crushed by a big ass boulder and destroyed. Pig knocks him off, breaks his spine. Boom! Just turns into a little pancake. I love that one. <laughs> he gets oh. fucking killed in this game. It always makes me laugh. When you finally conquer that ridiculous level, Crash says it all for you. He just goes. Great yeah. job, except you missed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 21, 22, 23, 24, 57, 58, 59, 60, 69, 49, 59, 6, 97, 98. Well, hey man, other than that, 
You did a good job. The presentation is top notch, and critics have most definitely taken notice. But what's more important to a game like this? How it feels or how it looks? Which leads into my final point, focus. Remember when this video was about game critics? That's because I lost focus. Immediacy, atmosphere, variety, replayability. This is what I value in a game. If the music sucks, if the levels are uninspired, if there's constant downtime, the game is not fun. If it's not fun, why bother? I see a lot of reviews where the language doesn't really align with the final verdict. The new Super Mario Bros. series has often felt like a watered down, more casual attempt. It's just a shame it doesn't push the system's visual or audio capabilities. Bit of a disappointment. Numbing, generic, bubbly music. Playing with friends is still a bit of a chaotic mess. By the time Let Mario guess, not really out starts to do interesting things, it's over. Damn, he fucking hates this shit. Yep. <laughs> Called it. Something for everyone. Makes no I've sense. I've seen the same thing like multiple times. People were like, "Yeah, this game is really great." Blah 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 blah. blah. I love everything about this. Blah 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 blah. Six out of ten. So, uh, final score: uh, five out of ten. Like, <laughs> it's like, like what? <laughs> what? What yeah, happened? It, it's just like uh, uh, this one game. It was uh, a typo. I think it's called <laughs> Moonlight. Uh, it it's a uh, it's got one of the most immersive and actually one of the most endearing stories in a game I've ever played. And it's and it's presented kind of Earthbound style, and uh, like all these reviewers are like giving it really good praise, like eight out of ten, nine out of ten, and then IGN got a hold of it, and IGN called it simplistic, underwhelming, too short, and all this. All, and guess what the uh, score was? Like nine out of ten. No, no, the score was uh the score was uh six out of ten. And uh they said they said it's one of the best indie titles out there, but yet it's still just an indie title. And then Undertale comes out a few years later and gets massive praise across the board from everyone. And it's just like what what happened? What 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 changed? At, oh well. I don't know on that. What are you going to do? Literally, like, I have a criticism for Undertale, and it is that it's kind of short. Like, but... It can be if you don't if you don't go back and get all the secret stuff. At and... the same time, I guess that's a personal thing, too, because it could take you less or more time to get through it, depending on, like, if you've played bullet held games before. If you, if you, like, if you're used to that style of game, it's actually kind of short. But if you're not used to that style, yeah, it's going to take you a minute because you're going to have to learn the patterns and beat the bosses, and it's going to take you a little longer than it would somebody who hasn't been used to games like that. Have you done all like so, all the know. endings or just the sands? Well, that's the thing, too, yeah, is like I've only done one ending so far. Genocide? And I, no, I did actually uh, um, a playthrough in the way that I would have played it, and which basically boiled down to me, everybody's going to hate me, um, m murdering Toriel and then immediately regretting the shit out of it um, and then actually killing uh, the king at the end because I felt like it was one of those situations where it's like you can kill him and leave or you can not kill him and have to stay and it's one of those things where it's like I'm sorry but did you have to fight I Sans? feel bad about this but I want to leave no I did not have to fight Sans damn Sans judged me as being a good person even though I killed Toriel like because I didn't kill anything else damn so it's just, uh, I mean, I was kind of trying to role play with it the first time, but I actually want to go back and do um, full, like, non. Full no, Full no story. kill and full genocide run just to see. You it. and me, you and me, um, we need to do the genocide run together. I'll let you do the pacifist run because the pacifist run, I did it and uh, I did it uh, back, I think it was back at the Roadhouse, actually. And, God, dude, what what a. I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful, uh, like, playthrough that was. Because I had all this stuff happen, and it was just like, what? What? What's it? No! No way! And then, right when things started to get, like, a little bit crazy, the game literally crashed. I don't know what I did, but the game literally just crashed. Dead. Wait, wait. Were you towards the end? No. Okay, because I was gonna say you know, no, I know, I know, you know it does crash on no, purpose. No, I know. Right? There's it okay. does it does a purpose it does a purposeful shutdown. Yeah, 
But no, it was during a random section. I was just like, what the hell? Huh. And I was just like, okay, let's start back up and try that again. But, God. Well, I bet, actually, I'm going to go ahead and take back what I said because I know everybody's already screaming at me in the comments being like, screw you, Undertale's good. Blah, blah, blah. Um, like, even though it's short, replayability is a factor and it is highly replayable for at least... You know, two to three times, I would say. Yeah, two, so, two three times. Honestly, the length of it's not bad in that case because if it was a really freaking long game, I would actually be less likely to want to replay it again just because I don't have time. Um, as opposed to, like, the length that it's at, I'm totally cool with doing, like, you know, two more runs of it in the future. So, I mean, I take that back. Sorry about that. Well, there you go. <laughs> really, Undertale is like a 10 out of 10 game. The only reason I took so long to play it is just because the fan base turned me completely off to Oh, it. gosh. Yeah, <laughs> so dude. Once, once it died down and people weren't talking about it and stuff, I was like... I, I actually... Um, I watched a guy uh, that I highly recommend if you like video game music and uh, people who are good at their instruments, but Family Jewels on YouTube. Huh. Um, and he does all kinds of video game uh, metal covers. And uh, he did music from the game, and I was just like, this sounds really cool. And I went and looked up, like, what it actually sounded like, and I was like, okay, like, I want to play this game just for the soundtrack. <laughs> so that's why I ended up playing it. Yeah, I've been there. Because uh, I actually like retro music a lot. Um, I guess, like, from growing up with NES, like, 8-bit songs were constantly replaying in my head. And then I got to, like, Super Metroid, and, like, I'll still occasionally be... Like sitting there, and just all of a sudden, I'll be humming, you know, bum, 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 just like, yeah, tunes from Super Metroid and stuff, yeah, it, God, dude, I also occasionally be sitting here humming modern tunes, too, you know, so just game music in general is like a big love of mine, oh, yeah. Obviously. Every once in a while, I'll be like, na 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 Here's one for you. See if you can place it. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Boo, boo, boo. Boo, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Bum, bum. Yes. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Is it a really obvious answer? Like, it's a really, really popular game? Yes. It was for Mario, right? Yes. And Which one? And Super Mario World? Is it the Boo House music? Back a little bit more. Okay, maybe not. Okay. I don't remember which one it's from. It's uh, Super Mario Brothers three. It's the uh, castle. It's the uh, castle theme. Oh, okay. It's like the mini castle and the big castles. It's like do 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 do. You know what my favorite one from uh. You know what my favorite one from uh. Super Mario Brothers three is. Uh, World six, the Ice World theme. The do 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 do. The only thing I remember from that is <laughs> and that's all I can remember from it just because it's been so long since I played it. For some reason, that one didn't stick in my head as much as other games did, but I can totally see why it did. Um, The one that I love, though, Mario music-wise, is uh, the freaking end of um, uh, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island when... Uh, Bowser, maybe Bowser turns into like the big ass Bowser in the background. Yeah, and it's like it's like the lightning cracks and stuff, and it's just he starts to come up in the background. It's like bum 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 bum, bum. like that made the freaking hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Well, of course, so you epic. see him coming in the background, and you're just like Jesus. And just like when the when the battle actually starts, the music for it is great. It's like a thrash metal type thing. Yeah. A lot, of people so think, a lot of people say uh, Mario uh, Super Mario World 2 is better than the first one. Uh, in terms of gameplay mechanics, I'd have to agree because I, I mean, think just just being able to throw eggs in the 3D space, like they're was really cool to me. They're two like different games. Like I can't even they really compare them, and I think they're both equally great. 
So they are. I, I, I couldn't so. say which one I think is better, but in terms of like final boss, though, I can definitely say I love that. The first, that yeah, boss the second one. The second the one is ones. better. Yeah, second one is better in terms of boss battles. Because Bowser was still really cool in the first one, but yeah, like that second one was just the most epic Bowser fight in my opinion. <laughs> no, no, I agree. I agree. Okay, so this was uh, video game donkey. Game critics, uh, let us know what you think about this video in the comments down below. Let us know if you agree with uh, with Donkey. And I guess until next time, signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. I never get to say anything. Kyra. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> did you? Did, was there something you wanted to say? Just be like, hey. No. <laughs> like I said, be more assertive, Kyra. I mean, don't be afraid to talk. Don't be afraid. I was just gonna say. Uh... I was just going to be an ass and say people may be criticizing you for criticizing Undertale, sort of. But they're also going to be like, this is another video where she's just over there not saying anything. And the guys are doing all the talking and everything. My bad. So, someone commented, this is why I don't like girls being in reactions. Because they don't play video games, so they don't get it. And to my <laughs> response, I say, uh, screw you, you don't know her. And uh, how about you actually get a life and <laughs> stop living in your ba mother's basement and stop masturbating to the Victoria's Secret catalog she just so happens to throw down there for you. She's it, also it here a... because she's interested in video games and this kind of stuff we're into, and she's learning about it. So <laughs> Yeah. It was a girl that commented that, though. She's like, I'm a girl myself, but I don't like the girls. I, no, like... I guarantee you, they're lying. They're not actually a girl. <laughs> Probably they're not. just saying that just so that they feel like they can have something <laughs> to say. It's like, hey, don't hide behind the facade that you're, that you're a girl. Like, actually come out and just say, yeah, I've got a dick, and I'm a dick. So what do you get? Either so, that or they're a stuck up girl that thinks they're better than everybody else because they do play video games and they're actually in a nerd culture. So they think that makes them like God's gift to mankind as a result. So. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Like we're going to be like, like the first men discovering fire. It's like, Ooh, gamer girl. Right. Yeah. I bet you that's your fantasy right there. You walk into a friggin video game store and you're actually wearing a shirt and you actually know what you're talking about. And every guy's just going to gawk at you and just be like, she knows what she's talking about. Ooh. No. no. Most of the gamer girls that I actually know and am friends with like actually hate that kind of attention. <laughs> They're just like, why do you have to be Say like all creepy because I have a hobby that you also <laughs> you have? Just like, be normal to people, man. People are just people. Be like, real. Hey, I'm learning. They made me play they made me play Doom for never having played a FPS before. And what did you think? I loved it and I wish I could play more of it, but there you go. Next time you're up here. Well, you totally can. Well, hey, <laughs> tell you what, tell you what. Um, either tomorrow or Saturday, I'm not sure what they what they have planned, but if you want to come up and play some more Doom. Oh, yeah, Friday. <laughs> remember I asked no, about no, tomorrow. No, no, I, I, I just He's remember like... that now. Sorry, yeah. my de my weeks, the weeks for me it's are holding together, dude. I just really so, want to play Far Cry 5 and finish so, it. <laughs> so for you, so <laughs> for you Tyler, like... how about Saturday? Uh I, for, I forgot what I was Now, if I beat Far Cry 5, I'm totally it. cool if she wants to pick up and play afterwards. But Okay. God damn, I want to finish that game. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've well, been playing yeah, it for too you long. Can finish yeah. it. Okay. You get to finish it tomorrow. That's right. Also, I'm sorry for like being, I don't know, however I am about like negative comments. Because this has been a reoccurring thing that you guys are like... Well, who gives a shit? <laughs> no, really. You just have to get to that point. I've also noticed that most of the people in the comments that are our fans are really cool people. So yeah. Well, yeah. People... I, I think that the people leaving negative comments are from off channel. They're probably not even subscribers. Like so yeah, they're a bunch of tryhard. I mean, bunch, they're they're just a little tryhard. Uh, they're tryhards. They try and piss everybody off. They come try on, so hard. say I'm... say what you want. Talk all the shit you want. Gives us views in a comment. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for helping out. I've noticed that people either only ever come for the streams or the reaction videos. It's never both. And some people only ever watch it's sometimes Nate both. or Ben or you or Heather. No, like not very many people watch all of you guys. <laughs> some people do. Yeah. Um, Dr. So, Dell is basically everywhere. Yeah, Dr. Dell. Dr. Dell. He's, in the, he's in the comments. He's even Clinton, in the comments. Yeah, he's in the comments. Yeah, too. Clinton is. Uh, um, watch it. Clinton knows all. Mark Clinton is Clinton is our uh, Mark. I can't. Morpheus. Sorry, Mark. I can't pronounce your last name. But Mark C. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark Chickalella. Yeah, he's believe. everywhere. So. so yeah, there's a few. So thank you all. Right, we uh we gotta end this before we go on. It's thirty minutes. Jesus. Again. Yeah. So thank you all very much for tuning in. And until next time, At signing off. It wasn't thirty minutes before the video. I know. <laughs> I'm Nate.
Nick. I'm Kyra, and I'm sorry. <laughs> and we'll see you later, everyone. Peace out. Thank you.